Okay, now I'm going to work an example of a hard level problem on the DC source transformations. So, as on the previous levels, we always start out in the circuit editor. So I click on Simplify Circuit. And I have a little bit more complex circuit this time. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, as always, is to see if there's anything that can be already combined in series and parallel. And indeed there is here. For example, I notice that the 8 ohm and the 3 ohm resistors are in parallel. So I'm going to take the product over the sum, the 24 divided by 11, and that'll give me 2.18 ohms there. And then I'll uh, select that one, turning it red, and click on the delete key, or I could also use this delete up here if you like. And I'm going to click on check combination because as always I have to finish what I've started before I can go on it and do something else. So I couldn't start a source transformation now, for example, until I'd done this. So that is correct. And then I notice I also have the 4 ohm in, uh, sorry, in parallel with the 9 ohm. So I will, uh, again, 36 divided by 13 there is 2.77 product over the sum. So then I'll delete that again by clicking the delete key here and check that combination. Once again, that is correct. And now I'll examine the circuit to see what else um, I can do. And I'll notice here my SOT variable, by the way, is going to be the SOT voltage of a current source. Remember that the voltage of a current source is whatever it needs to be in circuit analysis. And so that's the ultimate goal here is to find that, as indicated in the problem statement at the top. So what I notice here is that I have a voltage source here in series with a resistor. Neither one of them has a SOT variable, so they're eligible to be transformed, and that will put this uh, resistor in parallel with a 5 ohm uh, resistor so that I can combine those in parallel. So that's going to be a good thing to do. So I'm going to click on that, and I could, for example, right-click and uh, change the element type to a current source, or I could have just clicked over here as well. And I checked my polarity is pointed to the left, which is going to match the positive sign here being on the left. So now I'm going to put in the new value of that, which is the 1 volt divided by the 2.77 ohms. And doing the math very quickly, that's 0.361 amps. Now I need to have the 2.77 ohms uh, in parallel with that. So I'm going to drag this guy out of the way here and just drag, click and drag that up to there. And then I'm going to just use that short and reposition it so I can click on a short and drag it. Um, and then I'll need some new shorts, so I'm going to click on the Add New button here on the Circuit Editor form, as I did before. And that'll give me this little short that follows my cursor around. And so I can put that here, click on that, and then I'll put it down here and click on that to complete the connections. And then I'll select to get that to stop following me. Um, and then I'll check that indeed I should have the, uh, these two things connected to this node and one end is connected to that node, the other end is connected to this node, as it was before, so that should be correct, and the polarity looks right. So I'll check that, and everything is good. And now I have two resistors, as I said, in parallel, so I will take that and take the product there divided by the sum, or just add the reciprocals and take the reciprocal, which may be easier in this case. Um, and that'll give us a 1.78 ohms. I'll click on that one and press delete there, and now I'll check that combination. And that is correct. And now I have to look and see what else I can do. And I notice that over here, for example, um, I have the voltage source in series with the resistor. And if I transform those, they'll be in parallel with the 2.18 ohm resistor. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to drag this up here. And once I've started transforming a source, um, then I have access to, for example, click on shorts and things like that or add new shorts. I, I can't do that before I start a source transformation, however. So I have to do something to tell the computer that I'm actually transforming a source, such as dragging that resistor. Um, and notice that I won't be able to drag any of these other elements. It'll just give me an error message if I try to do that. So the only things you're allowed to drag are the, the source and the passive element that you are, in fact, transforming. So now I'm going to actually transform that before I forget. And then I'm going to put in the value, which now will be the uh, 1 volt divided by 3 ohms, or 0.333 uh, amperes. Um, and then I'm going to add an extra uh, short down there to complete that connection. And again, just check that everything looks right, and it does. So I'm going to check that, and that's good. And now I can combine those two resistors in parallel, the 2.18 and the 3. So again, doing the math there, that's going to give me a 1.26. Notice that when you combine in parallel, the numbers always get smaller, at least from the, the smaller of the two original ones. And now I'm going to delete the 3 ohm, 
and check that combination. And that is indeed correct. And now I have to look at the strategy for the rest of this and I say, well, I can't do anything about this because that has a SOT variable, so I have to leave that in place. But if I were to make this a series combination and this a series combination also, then I would have a single loop, which is sort of my desired uh, goal. So I'm going to actually do that. Um, first of all, I'm just going to use the compressing tool here to clean that up a little bit. And then I'm going to click on this to select that. And I'm going to change that now into voltage source. So I click on the voltage source icon. And then I'm going to put in my value, which is the product of the, the 0.333 or one third times the 1.26. So that will be a, a 0 0.42. And now I want to move this to be in series with that voltage source. So I'm going to click up here. I mean, I could have done it down here as well. Uh, in fact, I could do it over here too if I want. In fact, let's just do that to illustrate. Um, I'll delete that and move it down there. That's still in series, so it doesn't matter where I place it as long as it's in series. And that completes that, so I check that. And it's giving me a notice here. It says I did a valid source transformation, but it may not be useful. But that's because I have, have to do another one before I can combine anything, so that's fine. And it does tell me it's correct. So now I have to do one more source transformation, which will be this one, because I, I can't combine anything right now in series and parallel. Um, but I'll change that into a voltage source. And again, that'll now be the product of the 0.361 and the 1.78. So that will be a 0.643 or so. And then again, I'm going to put the uh, resistor now in series with that voltage source. And <clears throat> then I check that all the connections are still good. I'm still going to this node and this node are the end nodes, which is correct. So I check that, that's correct. And now I have a single loop circuit. I could quit at this point, but of course it might be beneficial to further simplify, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to combine these two voltage sources in series. Now notice that these are actually um, fighting each other, because this one, the current wants to flow from the plus to the minus, so it's going to go in a, a counterclockwise direction, whereas this one makes it go from the plus to the minus in a clockwise direction. So this is actually going to get subtracted from this one. So the 0.42 minus the 0.643 is going to give me, give me a negative 0.223, and I'll change that one to a short. And then I'm going to just change the polarity of this one for convenience, and make that a, edit that to get rid of the minus sign there. And then I'll check that, and that is indeed correct. And then these two resistors can also be uh, combined in series, and so I'm just going to add those two values down here, and that'll give me a 3.04, and change that to a short. Um, and then I'll, um, I'm also going to compress that just to make it look a little neater. So, oh, I can't do it just yet. Well, I have to do the combination first, I guess. And then I can do the compression. So sometimes it'll make you wait there just because of the way the program works. But I can still do it now. And I can also compress horizontally just to make that a little bit neater. So now I have a, a nice neat circuit. And that's as much done um, as it can be. You'll notice that now this is actually a redundant source because the current source is going to dominate the voltage source in this case by forcing a current through that circuit. So this is actually redundant, but it will affect the voltage across that current source. So I'm not going to try to get rid of it or anything. So now I click Done Editing. And now since that's a single loop, I'll select Single Loop Analysis. <clears throat> and now I'll need a KVL equation around that loop. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I take that back because, as this points out, the KVL equation actually does not exist here because we don't know the voltage across the current source. It's whatever it needs to be. So I stand corrected. And in fact, what I need to have, I will need a SOT variable equation for uh, V0. So let's do that. And there I'm going to have to use uh, KVL, basically going around the circuit to find that. So I'm going to have V0 equals and basically it's going to be a sum of a resistive drop and a voltage source drop. And so in this case, um, I'm going to need a plus I1 times the 3.04. And that's plus because the current's going in this direction. That'll put a plus here and a minus there, which is in agreement with the B0 direction. And then likewise, this is also in agreement with that direction. So that's going to be a plus sign there. And I just put in the 0 0.223. And 
<clears throat> the other thing I need then is a current constraint equation to establish the value of I1 is going to be controlled by the 8 amp source. So I go up here to a current constraint and notice it gives me the heading. It's kind of a hint as to what I need. And that's going to be a very simple equation that says that I1 equals to the um, 8 amps. And since they're going in the same direction, that'll be a plus sign as opposed to a minus sign. If this were pointing down, for example, it would be a minus sign. So I check that, and that is correct. Now I'm done with my equations. So now I simply have to put numerical values in. So using that value of I1, I just plug that in here. And I'm just going to do that quickly um, with the cheat button and check that. And that is, in fact, correct. And then if I want to have a detailed explanation, I can do that. It's only going to show me um, this. And it's actually showing doing another source transformation to simplify it down to two elements, which is perhaps useful, although um, it certainly wasn't required in this case. But I could have actually continued my source transformations one more step and made it into a two-element circuit rather than a three-element circuit. But it was certainly solvable uh, either way, so that doesn't really matter.